can you give your king of kings your lord of lords the lover of your life the provider of everything your healer your savior your deliverer your way maker can you give him some praise in the house our god is a good good god amen reminder to self don't jump too much when they sing hallelujah if you know you have to speak right after amen but god is such a good god and can we just go into this song holy spirit you are welcome here and can you just prepare your hearts for the word today can you do that for me can you pray for me today So this is my second service in heels. So I believe if I can stand and because I have to stand for the remainder of the service, you can join me for two minutes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory. God is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere, your glory. God is what I heart long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come like you today. this place and fill the atmosphere, your glory. God is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Praise God, praise God. Your Father God, we give you thanks this afternoon, Lord. I thank you for the assignment that you have placed on me today, dear God. But even right now, dear God, I'm asking that you will slain self so that you can be lifted up, God. Father God, I'm asking that even now that your presence will enter this room, that your Holy Spirit will dwell in the hearts of your sons and daughters, dear God. Father God, I'm asking that you will do what only you can do. That you will begin to minister to every single one of us today, God. Father God, I know that you are up to something great. So I ask that even now that all eyes will be taken off of me and all eyes will remain on you. We give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, and we give you all the praise. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. I'm standing here all messed up right now. The nine o'clock service did something amazing. They laid the foundation for this house and for you this afternoon. But with that, I broke my jewelry. I sweated out my hair. I'm having wardrobe malfunctions. And I asked my pastor if he could not live stream this service so I could just put on a PLC shirt and be comfortable. He did not agree, and I didn't want anyone to go online and say, why does she look like that? But I am going to ask one of the ushers just to prepare one of those shirts for me in a moment. Because I don't want anything to hinder what God is about to do in the house. Amen? And if that means me looking a little awkward for a moment, then I'd rather do that. Praise God. Praise God. 
we're in a season, I believe, where God is asking his children to be prepared to pray. We're in a season where he is calling us back to his altar. And it bothers me that I have to say that we need to get back there because me, when you say get back, it means that you lost your place. It means that you weren't where you were supposed to be. And I don't understand how as a body, we can lose our place when it comes to the Father. I don't understand that as a child of God that we could lose the one thing that once brought us into his presence. Because if it wasn't for prayer, we wouldn't be here at this moment. If it wasn't for us saying, Father, forgive us of our sins, we wouldn't know him. But I feel that we've taken so much for him and then we've kind of left him on the wayside. And God is saying that so much is happening around you. And everyone is questioning. Everyone is blaming it on the millennials. They're blaming it on the justice system. They're blaming it on the, the government. And God is saying, no, it comes right back to my house. You're talking about, oh, they took prayers out of school, but you've taken prayer out of my house. When you pray in the house of God, it releases something in the atmosphere all around you. That's in the schools, that's in the homes, that's on the workplace. And I'm here to declare that we are bringing prayer back into the house. And if I'm honest with you, church, there was a time where we questioned, do we pray too much? There are people who come into the house that don't want to know that you're praying three or four times for the day. But I also know that there are people that come into the house that say, if they don't pray for me today, I don't know if I'm going to make it. And I'm more concerned about those who desire and have a need for prayer than those who want to come in the house and lift up their heads and act like it's a problem because I want to spend 30 minutes in prayer. Because you came in unsaved, and you might leave unsaved, but I'm concerned about the person who doesn't know if they're going to make it to see another day if I don't lay hands on them and anoint them for the Father. So I'm saying that God has taken us back to a place where it's not about us. It's not about looking cute. It's not about what you're wearing, but it's about going into the holies of holies. I spoke to one of my friends yesterday and I said, I would not allow my children to grow up in a house, a spiritual house, where they don't know what it means to tarry before the Lord. I looked at my oldest daughter who's about to be 15. I said, God, when I was 15, I was filled with the Holy Ghost. And I'm not blaming the church because I'm her mother. But what helped me, what got me there? was I was surrounded by people and in a church where prayer was key. We prayed for each other. We anointed each other. I mean, wigs everywhere, weaves everywhere. You just didn't care. Froth coming from your mouth. But this is what we did. And I'm not talking about the seniors praying for the young. I'm talking about my friends praying for me. So I'm here to declare that we will... PLC will be a house of prayer. And can I tell you whether I declare it or not, there's a battle that is coming that even if you're not ready to pray, he's go you're going to pray. We're going to turn our Bibles quickly to James 5, reading verses 13 to 18, and I'm going to read from the NLT version. When you found it, you can just say Amen. Praise God. Now, you don't have to stand, but if you believe that he's a God that deserves you standing when you read his word, then I ask you to stand. If you feel otherwise, then you may sit down. Praise God. Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer is offered in faith, will heal the sick, 
and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Elijah was as human as we are. Elijah was as human as we are. And yet, when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. I want to read that again because some of us look at Bible and we think that it's comic or it's just, it's not real. It doesn't apply to us. But the word of God says, Elijah was as human as you and I. And yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, not only did it not fall, it did not fall for three and a half years. Then he prayed again. The sky sent down the rain and the earth began to yield its crops. Here in the reign of God's word, can you just say amen? amen. Praise God. Into the late 20th century, women were on the move and many moved from being homemakers to women of the workplace. I do not have a problem with that. I actually looked forward to that myself. Yet, I think we should be aware that because of the high demands now placed upon us as wives, as mothers, and even as daughters, the amount of praying that is now going on in the homes have been deeply and considerably impacted. In years past, women who were stay-at-home mothers were all-day prayer warriors. They prayed while they cleaned their home. They prayed while they bathed their children. They prayed while they cooked. They prayed while they mopped. They prayed while they walked up and down the street. They prayed while they swept the floor. And as they prayed, churches across this nation, across this globe, experienced revivals during these times. No service was like any other service because they were praying. I believe today, because of all the demands that are placed upon not just wives and mothers, but on the body of Christ on the whole, we have a hard time finding even a second to pray. To pray for our family, to pray for our church, to pray for the lost souls. In times past, the prayer movements of women and of the house of God made a significant difference in the spiritual climate of the church. So what happens when you take out prayer? It means that you can now stay home and dictate what's going to happen in the service. Amen. What happens when you take out prayer? It means that things are happening in schools that we have no control over. What happens when you take out prayer? It means you now entertain all these demons that sit beside you on a Sunday morning. Come on, somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, I hope you're not one of them. I know you laugh, but this is serious business, church. We need to get back to the place where we pray without ceasing. You don't have to quit your job to do it. You don't have to quit being strong to do it, but it has to get done. You want to know how to fight your battles? You pray. You want to know how to declare some things over your family? You pray. You want to know what job to accept? You pray. You want to know if that's the train that you should catch or miss? You pray. There is nothing too silly or too simple to pray about. You want to know if that should be your husband or not? You need to pray. You know, I, I want you to get this. If you want to know who needs to be your musician, come on, church. You need to pray. If you need to know who needs to lead worship, you need to pray. There is nothing you should not be praying over. What college is my son or daughter going to? You need to pray. Should I buy that car? You need to pray. And I know you're looking at me saying, ladies, you can't pray over things. Yes, you can. You can pray over every, and not only can you, you should. Everything. I did not pray over what shoes to wear this morning. I did not. 
or else I would be extremely comfortable right now. <laughs> Praise God. But on a serious note, I'm trying to help you understand that we need to pray more. I'm looking at my ushers and I'm declaring that there's going to be a shift in the ministry. A shift that's going to fall on everyone that opens that door. Because you are not only ushering people in, but you are ushering into the presence of God. You need to now see every single individual that walks through that door and be able to go to pass and say, there's someone here who's struggling with um, diabetes. There's someone here who's struggling that wants to take their life. There's someone here whose marriage is on the wraps. That's what the usher ministry is. That's what happens when you pray. Nothing gets by you when you pray. Your children can't get by you when you pray. Your husband can't get by you when you pray. Your wife cannot get by you when you pray this is the reason we need to pray I'm declaring that we will be a church that will pray while we're driving to work we will pray while we're clipping coupons we will pray while we're getting our manicures and pedicures. We'll pray while we're shopping. And if you have a husband that says stop shopping, you'll pray even harder. <laughs> you'll pray while you're changing your tire. You'll pray while you're washing your car. You'll pray whenever and whatever you're doing, you will continue to pray. I promise you, if you receive that in your spirit today, the atmosphere of PLC will change. I promise you the dynamic will change. It won't take the praise and worship team trying to bring down strongholds. If you stay prayed up on Monday, if you stay prayed up on Tuesday, if Thursday comes and you're still prayed up, if Friday comes and you're still prayed up, by the time Sunday comes, you're walking in his glory. You're walking in his anointing. You're walking in his deliverance. It will be a different type of service. I truly believe, and I'm not being biased, but I truly believe that when women of God pray, they touch the heart of God. There's something about a daddy-daughter relationship. And don't get me wrong, because I want us to raise up men that can declare war on the enemy's camp. But maybe it starts with us, women. Maybe it starts with us anointing our men. Maybe it starts with us declaring that they will be the shepherd of the home through prayer. Maybe we've lacked along the years. But I honestly know there's something special about women and when they pray. Throughout the Bible, this powerful prayers of women are recorded. And despite the cultural norms of those days, they said men were the ones who were supposed to be the spiritual leaders and the liaisons to God. But we see women display strength and faith in a way that may be questioned by so many. There are many women in the Bible whose example we can look towards when we think about how to pray. And I truly believe that we're in a season where God is working on the hearts of his daughters in the kingdom of God. He is raising up not just daughters, but sons and daughters who are going to declare what the kingdom is and what it should do when it reigns on earth. I believe that he has called some of us to our prayer closets. He has called some of us to our knees. He has called some of us to worship and anoint. He has called some of us to just be anointed. He has called some of us to sing. He has declared that some of us will dance. He has called many of us to preach and to teach. He has called some to pray without ceasing. He has called some to prophesy. And he has called some to simply wait on the Lord. Many of us don't like to wait. We don't, especially living in New York. You just feel like you just have to keep going. But we're reminded in Isaiah 40, 31, it says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall and not be weary. They shall and not faint. Wait on the Lord. There's three women I want to talk about, and then I want to bring you into battle. Are you prepared for battle today? God has called me today to prepare you for battle. And can I tell you that if you're not ready, you might as well curl up and die. And I know that might sound harsh, but what's about to happen and what God is about to do in this house, if you don't prepare yourself for battle, you will be crushed. I'm reminded of Mary. Mary was faced with an impossible miracle, one that was only difficult to believe. 
but could reflect poorly on her society despite how glorious it was that she was carrying who? The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Mary prayed and rejoiced in Luke 1. She said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now and all generations will call me blessed. For he is mighty and has God has done great things for generations to come. And on his holy name, she sings. Her faith and her deep relationship with God is a reminder to trust in his calling, even when the circumstances just don't make sense. Have you ever been there where it just did not make sense? You felt like you did everything right, but it just did not make sense. I brag about the fact that God allowed me to go through four years of college. I was excited about that. I was excited about getting my degree. I was excited about being an educator, having summers off and all the missions trips that I was gonna do. So when I got married and got pregnant four months later, I, it just didn't make sense to me. Then I had my child and was, got, had, what was it? I was, had, had Ariana got pregnant with Janice while Ariana was only three months, then had Janice. I was just all messed up. I was like, God, I just don't know what you're doing. Like, this really don't make sense. You gave me a degree. I can't work. You know, we had a plan. I was going to do missions. I was going to Africa. This just don't make no sense. Fine. Went back to work after they got old enough, was working, was excited because I'm an independent woman. Any independent woman in the house? Amen. Praise God. I love to be able to buy my own thing, do my own thing, and that's just me. Fine, went to work, loved the classroom. Seven years ago, there comes Caleb. <laughs> and I love me some Caleb. But it did not make sense. God, we had a plan. I was going back to school. I was going to do my thing. Like, why now? And my husband will tell you, I wept. You think Hannah wept? I wept <laughs> because I was so confused. Had Caleb stayed home for two years, went back to work, was so excited about going back to work. Yes, there goes that money again. Could buy the Louis bags, the Jimmy shoes. Don't have to ask pastor for anything. Then he looks at me. He says, oh, we're going to pastor the church. That's fine. I'm not going to stop working. He pastored. We did a year. We started to see how it affected our children. Me working full time, him working triple full time decided to stay home with the kids and that was tough for me it just didn't make sense to me I said God what are you doing I need to be at work I need to do my own thing I need to when he says no I need to say that's okay because I can do it myself anyway that was my plan and you're laughing but what I'm trying to tell you is what God showed me was I needed you to be home because while your husband was working I was preparing you for battle and I didn't get that at the time. But see, while he was hustling and bustling, I was on my knees. When my children were at school, I was in my shower weeping before the Lord. When he was annoyed and not knowing where, what, and what was coming, I was saying, God, you better make a way. I said, God, you better make a way. God, you better make a way. So when you don't understand, when it doesn't make sense, sometimes you just got to lift your hands and say, Father, I trust you. Father, I trust you. I don't know what you're doing. I don't understand it very much, but I trust you. But that wasn't always my story. There was a time where I fought differently. I didn't know how to fight on my knees. I was confused. I felt like I was very independent. <laughs> The Holy Spirit is trying to set me up right now. I married my husband in July. He probably won't even remember this because Pastor Hester is the type, if you step on his toe and you come back in the hour to say sorry, he's already forgotten how you hurt him. He doesn't hold on to anything. I'm a little bit different. If you step on my toe, if you don't come back, I, I, I remember. <laughs> even if you come back, I'm telling you, I just, I just think that's wisdom. I, I forgive and I don't forget. But I'm not saying that's the right thing to do. We got married in July, loved my husband dearly. And September came around, he did something that really annoyed me, like men do. <laughs> annoyed me to the point where I remember he was at work, I got home early as a teacher, and I said, I just need to go to Bible study. 
And I walked all the way over here, well, from 48th Street. I walked over here, and I sat in Bible study. And I said, God, if you don't do something, I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe he didn't hear me. I went back home. I'm not sure if you remember this. I went home, and I was so upset, and he had this beautiful gift waiting for me on the bed. And I couldn't receive it. I picked up my luggage, married maybe eight weeks, started putting my clothes in my bag. And I said, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Because that's how I knew how to fight. That's what I saw in my home. And God bless my stepfather because now he's a minister of the gospel and he's all over the place. But at that time, when things got hard, I saw him leave. So when things got hard, and that wasn't even hard, but it just wasn't the way I wanted it. I was annoyed. So you know what I did? I packed up my things. I looked at him and I said, I'm leaving. Eight weeks. I'm gone. And I remember he looked at me, just puzzled, like, what? Because he didn't grow up in that lifestyle. And I, I don't know if he was just like, God, what did you get me into? Or just like, what's happening right now? And I'm being transparent with you because I'm trying to tell you that's how I knew how to fight my battles at the time. If it got hard, if it was uncomfortable, if I didn't understand, I left. I walked away from it. And maybe that's why God gave me children so quickly. Because he knew if I, if I blessed her with a child, she'll never leave. <laughs> I'm being honest. So he put me in a place where I knew I had to stay on my knees. So I'm here to tell you, when you don't know prayer, you'll turn to other things. You'll turn to the drugs. You'll turn to the alcohol because you think that's your escape. But God is saying, if you really want to know how to fight your battles, you need to get on your knees because that's when I intervene. I'm reminded of Anna. This often becomes a challenge in the reality of life. Perhaps no one knows this better than prophetess Anna. In Luke 2, we learn she spent the majority of her life as a widow. Anna was married for seven years and a widow for 80 plus years. God led her to pray for decades. To pray for the coming Messiah. That's all Anna did. She was back and forth in the temple. She fast, she prayed. She fast, she prayed. She fast, she prayed. She didn't have time to weep over her dead husband. She fast, she prayed. She fast and she prayed. And then let's talk about Hannah. And Joanne, I want you to get ready because you're going to get prepared for battle for me. Hannah at times, this is not Anna. Hannah at times we may be tempted to believe the message that we must be joyful and happy for others to respect us. That we must be jolly for God to hear from us. But the biblical examples indicate otherwise. First Samuel tells us that Hannah longed for a child and she wept bitterly while praying for one. Though others chastised her, God did not. God welcomes honesty in prayer. Can I be real, church? Whether you're honest or not, the Father knows you to the core. So you can pretend all you want. Why not verbalize it? It was this time last year, I think I told you I was so upset with God. And people were upset with me for saying that. But I've learned whether I say to God or not how I'm feeling, he already knows my heart. And sometimes he just wants me to say what I'm feeling. I don't have time to be cute. I don't have time to put on makeup and walk up and down in Louis Vuittons. I don't have time for that. Sometimes God has called you to be ugly for the kingdom. Sometimes he has called you to sweat out your hair. He has called you to mess up your jewelry. He has called you to break a heel. Hannah got her blessing because she wept bitterly before God. And God honored that. That the people around her mocked her. They chastised her. They didn't understand her. They thought she was losing her mind. But can I tell you, when you desperately need something for the Father, you will get ugly for him. I'm not about looking cute anymore. You want me to look cute? Wait until Tuesday, okay? But when I come into the house on a Sunday... I declare that it begins wartime. 
I declare that we're in a battle. I declare I missed my ponytail. I can't pull it back anymore. But I declare on Sundays, it's not time to be pretty. It's time to pick up your things and fight. Joanne, will you come? See, I'm from the Bronx. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the Bronx, we fought a little differently than the spiritual realm. It took us some time to catch up. But we took off our jewelry. Do you have any jewelry, any earrings? No. We took off our jewelry. We got our scrunchie. We put our hair back in the ponytail. Right, Joanne? Come on. Work with me, girl. Put your hair back. We put a little Vaseline on our face. If y'all don't know about that, you don't want to get scratched up. We dosed our face with Vaseline, right? You could put a little bit. It's okay. I guess she wants to get scratched up. We put on our gloves, but in those days, honestly, we found as many rings as we could find. You have one, good. But put your gloves on anyway, it's cuter. And we put as many of our friends' rings on our fingers. Because we wanted to know that when we fought, that we were gonna leave a scar. We wanted to know that we went, when we went to battle, there was no way that we were gonna fall and not get up. So we put those rings on. Joanne's putting on her gloves. And if I'm honest with you, church, I wasn't the one to fight. I always had a heart condition, but I had the biggest mouth. I did. So I was always the one instigating, and I was the one everyone wanted to fight. But when it came down to it, I had friends that wouldn't allow me to fight. They always intervened for me. No, you can't fight. You can't fight. So it made it easier to get into trouble because I knew I didn't have to fight. But I'm reminded of a time, come with me, Joanne. I'm reminded of a time in junior high school. The same father that I told you is now minister in the gospel. And I went home to my daddy and I said, Daddy, they're teasing me. Every day after school, I'm putting on my backpack. And they're pulling it off and they're calling me ugly. And they're saying, you're wearing balloon shoes. And they're just being really mean to me. And it hurt me. It still hurts me. See, I'm crying. And... My dad looked at me and he said, all right, tomorrow I'm going to pick you up from school. We'll take care of it. I was so excited because I thought that meant that he was going to come and talk to the principal and they were going to deal with these kids who kept messing with me. And I remember he pulled up after school and I got out. I went into the car and he said to me, where are the kids? Where are the kids? And I said, that's them right there, daddy. That's them right there. They keep messing with me. And he said, sit in the car. And he drove up and he drove next to them. And I was a little confused. I thought we were going inside. And he said, get out the car. And I looked at him. I said, what do you mean, get out the car? He said, you get out the car. And if you have a Jamaican father like I did, you know when he talk, you listen. And I looked at him and said, daddy, I don't want to get out the car. And he said, you get out the car. And I dropped my backpack and I got out the car. He said, you better fight. He looked at me, he said, you better fight. And I stepped out that car and I said, hey, you. <laughs> I probably didn't say it that loud, to be honest. And he said, fight, fight. And I said, hey, you. And the whole group, they turned, I was like, what, what, what you want? And I remember I said, let's fight, let's fight. And they looked at me and they was like, all right. And I said, let's fight, let's fight. And I'm crying, let's fight, let's fight, fight. <laughs> And right as I got my fist up and I was about to go, my dad stepped out that car. I was ready. I was finally prepared for battle. I felt like he trained me. But then my father came out and he stood before me. And he said, you don't mess with my daughter. He said, you don't mess with my child. And he said, the next time you think you're going to mess with her, you got to come through me. I'm here to declare to you that when you pray, you have a father that says, you got to come through me. There is no battle. There is no storm. There is no disease. There is no trouble. There is no tribulation that your father isn't ready to fight for you. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet, everyone. Hallelujah. 
Joanne, you stand right there. It's ironic that pastor asks you to pray. But I'm here to declare for you that God is saying that you've been in training. You've experienced so much loss in your life. You're confused about it. But God is declaring today that he is anointing you for this time. That listen to me, the things that you have been experiencing now is because that he is preparing you to fight that battle. My child, let me take you. pray over her for me this is what I want you to do there's a song they're about to sing but I'm declaring right now that we are preparing for battle and I'm here to teach you Anisha will you come I'm here to declare with you <laughs> you've seen your parents do things you've seen how they fought, fought their battles but God is saying that you are about to embark on something and you need to learn how to pray. You need to learn how to see things before they happen. I'm not telling you that battles might come. I'm telling you that battles will come and you are stronger than you know. want to pray for you if you're in the house and you're saying I know I'm in battle and I just need you to anoint me I need to be prepared to fight I want you to come and if you're here you're just saying I don't know much about this battle but I know that I want to be prepared when it comes we want to pray for you as well I'm telling you there's something in the house today and if you would just stretch out your hands to receive it God is about to do miraculous things in the house God is about to do something that's gonna blow your mind my God if we would just fill these altars hallelujah Jesus hallelujah we're gonna sing that song but we're gonna sing it slow okay praise God praise God the song says this is how I fight my battles this is how I fight my battles you may think that I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Do you believe that you're surrounded by the Father today? Do you believe it? Will you come? Hallelujah. I need my prayer warriors to meet me at this altar. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. 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 Praise God. Praise God. I see some men at this altar that need to be touched. Hallelujah. This is a season where God is going to raise up the men in this house. Praise God. My God, my God, my God. If we could just have our men filled with the Holy Ghost. We need to have our men filled with the Holy Ghost. We need to have our sons filled with the Holy Ghost. You can't fight that battle without the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, would you begin to pray? I promise we'll come around and we'll anoint every single one of you. But would you begin to pray? Would you begin to press? Would you begin to talk to your father? Will you be honest with him this afternoon? It's all right. Don't worry about who's next to you. He knows you to your core. He knows you to your core. He knows that you're not sleeping at night. He knows that you're battling depression. He knows that you're struggling with pornography. He knows about your infidelity. He knows about your lying. If you would just talk to the Father. Hallelujah. 
Sister Sherry, will you come and pray? And I'm going to ask the others just to help me anoint every single one. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, God. Father, I plead your blood in this place today, God. Father, your blood prevail in this house today, God. The blood of Jesus prevail, oh God. Lord, your blood prevail against every spirit of heaviness today, God. Your blood prevail against every problem, God. Your blood prevail against every trial, oh God, Lord Jesus. Your blood, oh God, your blood cover us today, oh God. Cover us with your precious blood, God. Cover us with your anointing, God. Cover us, oh God, Lord Jesus. Let our voice, oh God, be heard, oh God, Lord Jesus. Let our voice, oh God, be heard, oh God. Oh God, as we sing your face, God. As we call upon your name, oh God. This is how I fight because you are battles. holy, God. This is how because I you are holy, battles. God. This is because how I fight you are my battles. Daddy, God. This you is are how a I father, fight God. Battles. You are this a good, good father to us, Father. This is how, how I fight my battles. Jesus. This we is stand how I fight God, my Lord battles. Jesus. This is how I fight my battles. battles. This is how I fight my 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 battles. Yes. This is how I fight my battles. 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 This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like may think that I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like. Surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You may, you may think that I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. This is how I fight. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. 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 For you move mountains. You move mountains. You move mountains. You move, you caught walls to fall, 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 you caught, you caught chains to break, 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 you caught chains. 
is how I fight my back. This 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 is how I fight. This is how I fight my back. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my back. This is how I fight. 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 It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. This is by how you. I fight my battles. This is how 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 I fight my battles. We make miracle work, promise keeper. We make miracle work, promise keeper. We make miracle work, promise keeper. Yes. We maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Say we maker, we maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. We maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Say we maker, we maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. We maker. Miracle worker, promise keeper. Say we maker, we maker. Miracle worker, promise keeper. We maker, we maker. Miracle worker, promise keeper. This is how I fight my battles. 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 This is how I fight my battle. 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 This is how I fight. 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 It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. It may look like, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. 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 
This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight. This is how I fight. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battle. 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 This is how I fight my battle.
This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. This is how I.